Welcome back to the channel friends, it's Ed Bud here and today I've got a video for you centred around my summer season running apparel and equipment. <sighs> it's a bit hot for this, <laughs> that's better. Before we get to the meat and potatoes of the video though, if you're a new viewer or you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when new videos are launched and give the video a thumbs up. I would be most appreciative. So a number of viewers have been in touch with me and said, Ed Bud, give us a rundown of your summer season running gear and apparel. And I said, okay. We all love running shoes, right? Examining the slightest differences between model to model, manufacturer to manufacturer, tempo shoes, race shoes, daily shoes. But it's not just about shoes in this weather. We need to make sure we're kitted out in the right stuff. Or we'll just boil like an egg. I'm really hungry yet again today. So we will kick off with shoes just because everyone loves shoes. I've got to be honest, when things start to heat up, I'm liking a slightly lighter shoe, something a little more breathable. So I've been really enjoying using the Reebok Forever Float Ride Run Fast 2. I can't believe I just managed to say the whole name without getting it wrong once. It's a super light shoe. I think this one clocks in around about 250 grams. I could be wrong. I will measure it and place it up on the screen if I'm incorrect. I don't like being incorrect. The upper is very, very breathable. Apart from the heel, there's a little bit more protection there, but the rest of it, you can almost feel the wind flowing through over your feet. For the same reasons, I've actually been enjoying using the Hyperion Tempo from Brooks as well. It's just really well ventilated here in the forefoot area. Certainly over the last sort of four weeks or so, those two have been my main staples. I know it's not that hot for some of you out there. You live in countries where it's way, way warmer. But over here, us Brits, we're just not built for it. Another shoe I think I'll probably get out in over the next few days is the Adios 4. It just feels sad that I haven't even got it to 50 miles. I'm so sorry. Both the Hyperion Tempo and the Run Fast 2, really great on roads. Hyperion Tempo probably more suited for that, whereas the more bobbled and segmented outsole on the Run Fast 2 is a little better for multi-terrain scenarios. This said by banging and stuff down there. Artist is trying to work here. How can I work in these conditions? I hope she hasn't heard me. I'll be in the bad books. So all three of those shoes really nice and light. It's just not a sort of time when I want something really big and heavy on my foot. The idea of using something like the Ultra Boost 20 or the Zoom Fly 3 or, or the New Balance 1080 V10. At the moment, it just seems like putting a pillowcase on my feet. And I just really don't want to do that right now. So as things are heating up, the long sleeve tops have been put away and furloughed. The sun hats and those neck flaps need to come out. So in terms of upper apparel, I've been using this dry fit Myla vest from Nike. These fit really great for me in terms of a medium size. I'm very tall, but not sort of very wide. So a medium's ideal for me. I find them crazy absorbent as well. I just seem to be some sort of awful sweat machine at the moment, even in relatively cooler conditions. They seem to do really well pulling the sweat away, certainly at front and in the back. The knit's very slightly different in the back. There's more of a mesh to it. it seems to work really well. You can normally pick these up on a deal for about 15 pounds. I think they're pretty good value, really. This one's been washed hundreds of times and it still comes up pretty good. In fact, I accidentally put it in with some of Mrs. Edbud's clothes once and some dye came out and I thought it was curtains for this one, but after a few washes at a slightly warmer temperature, the dye came out and it's as good as new. I shouldn't be allowed to use the washing machine. <laughs> Certainly seems to wash better than the long sleeve stuff that I've bought from Nike. That just turns out really smelly, I've got to be honest. I've tried washing it at all sorts of different settings, but those long sleeve tops are a little bit thicker. They just, they smell terrible. Miss Edbud, obviously, at the moment, is pregnant as well, so her sense of smell is, like, through the roof. <laughs> I think one of those is now close to binning, actually. So, as I say, the back of the top's got this kind of vented mesh. It's very slightly different. Really find these ideal in the warmer climates at the moment. Shorts-wise, I've got a couple of different pairs in my rotation right now. My fave pair are these Nike Aero Swift shorts. I've got both a blue and a black pair. Sadly, the blue pair's pocket has a small hole in it. <laughs> I did almost lose my house key the other day, which would have been pretty bad. These have got fantastic breathability. They are exceptionally short, I will say that. 
I've got very long legs and I think perhaps a large might have been a good idea, but I kind of like the shorter shorts. Certainly in this weather, I just overheat so easily. They don't seem to absorb too much moisture either, which is another problem I've had with other makes of short. Other makes of short, is that a thing? Yep. The cutouts down the leg are actually quite considerable, so it doesn't hinder your movement at all. It really allows you to be quite mobile out there. Certain shorts, certainly with my long legs, I've really found that they limit my movement, certainly hip movement. If I want to go fast, it's these shorts every time. They do have some sort of briefs type section underneath the main short material. And the pocket does have a zip here, although it is relatively shallow in terms of pockets. You can just about get a science in sport gel in there if you kind of bend the top over and your key, but you do find that the shorts are so light that actually they start to sag on the side that the pocket's on if you put anything too heavy in there. They sort of slump <laughs> across and uh, you've got to make some adjustments sometimes. I hate holding stuff in my hands when I'm running. I really, really don't like it. I mean, sometimes I've got to take the GoPro out there, uh, but I constantly switch that over between hands. I've got this real phobia about the fact that holding the GoPro in one hand for too long is going to cause me some sort of weird imbalance or something. Again, a medium's the right size for me in these, but those of you who like perhaps a more modest fit might wish to go up a little bit in size. I've had no problems with the tie, and certainly the section around the waist is quite vented actually, so you never get too hot in these. My favourite shorts. They do come at a bit of a premium though, they're a little bit pricey for some. For those slightly colder days, or the days where I want a little more support, I do tend to use these two-in-one shorts from Nike. I think they're the two-in-one flex stride shorts. These were from the previous season, but they've held out pretty well in fairness. You've got a very small pocket on the right rear side. It's very shallow. There is a little tie to hold your keys as well. And some quite considerable pockets here. Though the problem I found is the opening's just far too wide, and if you put something in there of weight, Sooner or later it falls out, which happened to my phone. So I tend to use a couple of safety pins just to make sure that the phone can't escape and make a break for freedom again. The Flex Stride shorts are about 13 centimeters in length and of course provide a little bit more support due to that kind of liner. They've almost got like a sort of cycle shorts type liner. Something that you might see Mo Farah or Kipchoge wearing, but without the shorts part, of course. Miss Edbud always reckons that if I just wear those cycle short type things that they're what was the word she just she find <laughs> she just finds that they're not something you can wear on a training basis that they'd be more a race type piece of attire i've got to be honest i'm not sure i have the gusto to wear them on a thursday morning or something for training again the two-in-one flex dried shorts wash really well They've been washed loads of times. I find them really, really comfortable. Certainly if I'm doing some longer runs, perhaps at lower paces. Sock-wise, I'm still really enjoying the Uncommon Training Tab Socks from Stance. These could survive a conflict. I find that despite them being a little thicker than perhaps some would like, that they're really, really breathable. They work exceptionally well with the couple of shoes I showed you earlier. I tend to hand wash these to extend their longevity a little bit. Certainly my favourites really, but I have noticed a slight problem with them with some shoes. The little logo here that you can see, which is stitched to the inner side of the sock, sometimes causes a little bit of rubbing or discomfort with certain tongues in certain shoes. The Triumph 17 and New Balance 1080 V10 were actually, unfortunately, part of that issue. They were particularly bad for that, so it's just something to really keep in mind if you're going to give these socks a whirl. The other socks I'm really digging right now are these from Belega. They're the Enduro Quarter Socks. These are a little thicker, though still very breathable actually on foot. When you pick them up you kind of think, "Ooh, it's going to be a little too toasty for me today, but I've never had an issue with them thus far. These wash incredibly well and they still retain their soft as beast's fur comfort find them really good in terms of performance, but also durability. So probably worth checking out. Last on my warm weather update is the Nike Aerobill Tailwind hat, complete with the neck cover. This quite light and breathable hat is exceptionally good. You can just wash it by hand if you want to, straight after your run, hang it up and it's dry within half an hour. I like the fact that I can easily kind of store it away and stash it away if I'm running. You can easily place it into the side of your shorts or something if you feel that you're just getting too warm while you're wearing it. It does come with this awesome neck cover. It just Velcros on to the top of the hat and you can just kind of pull it off if you don't need it. And then it does have a little pouch where you can actually store the neck cover if it's unneeded. This one's really great, very absorbent actually. It's pulled some of that sweat away from your head and I found it quite good value really at 20 pounds. 
This one's been washed by hand many, many times. It still keeps coming back for more. Really easy to adjust it on the fly if you've only got one hand. And as I mentioned, super fast drying. So check that one out. I loved it so much, I bought two of them. If you've got any questions about any of my summer running gear, please do place them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. In fact, I'd love to hear about what your summer running gear is. Please let me know all of the different bits and pieces that you'll be using over the next couple of months. Okay, it's time for me to go and have a rest because it's been a very busy day and I think I'm gonna fall down in a minute because I've just got no energy left whatsoever. I do thank you for watching through to the very end of the video. If you're a new viewer or you haven't done so yet, I would really, really appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below of when new videos are launched. Give the video a thumbs up like, share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.